844-8448. Here's an eight minute video and anyway, so go ahead and call in. It's the last show of the year and your last chance to get some comments before the next show on the 7th of January. Richard said, my name is Eric Lawyer, and I founded the Firefighters for Not Living Truth after I watched Richard in one of his presentations, and I realized that something more had to be done. And I just want to thank Richard for everything he's doing here, and the Firefighters for Not Living Truth strongly support Richard Gage and all the architects and engineers that have the courage to sign that petition. And I know from personal experience, there's about five times as many out there that believe what we believe but don't have the courage to sign it. So what I'm hoping today is that people will find the courage after listening to this presentation and seeing everybody here and seeing that we are behind it. <clears throat> we also demand an investigation that follows the national standards and has contempt and subpoena powers. 9-11 was the greatest loss of life and property damage in U.S. fire history. This should have been the most protected, preserved, over-tested, and thorough investigation of a crime scene in world history. Sadly, it was not. What was it? Well, we know from their own admission, the majority of the evidence was destroyed. I, like Richard said, 22 years of experience, I've seen a lot of crime scenes, I've never seen anything like this in my life. <clears throat> I, was, I was out at the site, I saw trucks leaving faster than you know, anywhere I've ever seen, but I accepted it at the time, and for years I accepted it, because it was a recovery and rescue operation, and that's normal to have something like that going. Again, we've never seen anything like it, but that was expected. What I didn't know for years, what was going on behind the scenes was that evidence was being destroyed when it was shipped off. Um, by their own admission, um, Tower 7 investigation, this investigation in Tower 7 had no physical evidence. How do you investigate a crime when you've destroyed all the evidence? It doesn't make sense. Um, they also admit that they refuse to test the explosives or to test for explosives or, or residue of thermite. Now, this is what I'm going to go into here just real quickly, is there are national standards for an investigation. That's what all of us are asking for, an investigation that follows national standards and holds people accountable. <clears throat> this, this manual right here, just so you can see it, is what we call the, the kind of the fire investigation 101. This is the most basic fire investigation manual there. This is for the 2001 edition. This is what should have been referred to at least. It doesn't have to be followed exactly, but it should have been used as a guideline for the investigation. I'm just going to cover a few of the things that are in here. <clears throat> so NIST violated, and the initial investigators that did not protect the scene, violated the most basic of the guidelines. And I'm going to cover five of them here. One is the NFPA 9.3.6. It covers spoilation of evidence. What Specifically what it reads is once evidence has been removed from the scene, it should be maintained and not destroyed or altered <clears throat> until the investigation is complete. The steel was melted down prior to the investigation. We know that from their own admission. This is no conspiracy theory stuff. 19.2.4, exotic accelerants. If, the, if on the scene you find melted steel or concrete, you should consider the use of exotic accelerants. And they specifically say in the manual, thermite mixtures produce exceedingly hot fires that can account for melted steel and concrete. It also says they leave residues that can be tested for visually and chemically identifiable. <clears throat> Again, they did not test for it. And just put it in perspective, on a routine house fire, if we suspect even the slightest use of an accelerant, we're going to test for it when there's no fatalities, when there's very little property damage. So to not do it on this, there is absolutely no excuse. I can't drive that point home enough. 18.15 is analyze fuel source. All available fuel sources should be considered and eliminated until one fuel can be identified as meeting all the physical damage criteria. For example, if you find, if you find pulverized concrete, which we all know there was in all three buildings there was pulverized concrete, <clears throat> the only fuels that can create seeded explosions should be considered. So they shouldn't be considering fires. They shouldn't be doing that. It doesn't account for pulverized concrete. They should only be considering exotic ex accelerants and explosives. 19.4.8.2.6, extremism. The terrorist may include fire as but one of a variety of weapons along with explosives used in furthering his or her goal. We know they used them in 93. Why would we not test for them now? There was reports that day, multiple reports, which I'll get into in a second. So they could have put them in the basement. How do we know that unless we test for it? I mean, even if it is the terrorist that they claim they are, we need to test this. 14.3, preservation of the fire scene and physical evidence. We find the following. The cause of a fire explosion is not known until the, near the end of the investigation. The entire fire scene should be considered physical evidence and should be protected and preserved. It's just over and over. There's so many. You can go to our website, the Firefighters for Island of Truth. We have many more of these actual um, chapters that cover what they should have done that they did not do. So now by their own admission, in all three building collapses, NIST refused to test for, to physically test, like Dr. Stephen Jones did, for explosives. Um, this, this is just 
unbelievable. And here are their excuses, and I quote, it is unlikely that 100 pounds of thermite or more could have been carried into World Trade Center 7 and placed around columns without being detected, either prior to September 11th or during that day. So again, I've been on a lot of fire scenes, and I've seen a lot of investigations, and why would we not test because something's hard to do? That's the exact reason you need to investigate it. If that was hard to do, we need to find out how they did it. And number two, NIST excuse. In addition, no blast sounds were heard on the audio tracks of the video recordings during the collapse of World Trade Center 7 or reported by witnesses. That's one of the excuses why they didn't test. Well, apparently they didn't read Chapter 18. 18 is the general definition of explosions. Although an explosion is almost always accompanied by the production of a loud noise, the noise itself is not, in big bold letters, an essential element in the definition of an explosion. The generation and violent escape of gases are the primary criteria of an explosion. So that alone says they should have tested for it. But then we also, they, the NIST has lied, and we can prove it. As soon as the new investigation happens, you're gonna, the evidence is out there for you to see right now. We have 118 first responders who reported explosions. We have the radio transmissions from FDNY members that are still recorded today that reported explosions. We have audio recordings. We have video recordings. I've personally talked to witnesses that heard them. So there's nothing short of saying they lied, and we need, they need to be held accountable. And besides that, the, uh, well, they, like I said, there is no excuse for not testing for explosives. And so at the very least, at the very best, even if you want to believe the official story, this was the most incompetent investigation of all time. And I've talked to a lot of investigators that were there, and I asked them the specific question, why did they refuse to test? They weren't the ones who refused, but NIST did. And they said all we can say, you know, all they can answer is incompetence or they tell me to shut up. They cannot give me any, def any reason that follows national standards. So, but the reality, after you know, all the research everybody here and the incredible people we're in the room with today have done, the reality is it was a criminal investigation to cover up the crime. So, yeah. like, just to finish, I'm just, gonna, just to finish, uh, I'd like to read a quote. This is from a retired, decorated FDNY lieutenant. Anyone who knows the fire service, he, he is a stud. He worked on uh, Ladder Company 26, Rescue Company 3, Rescue Company 1 in his career. Anyone who knows, those are amazing companies. Um, He's, here's his, his uh, comment. Trade Tower 7 by itself is the smoking gun. Not hit by an aircraft with only a few relatively small fires, it came down in a classic crimp and implosion, going straight into its basement. Something only very precise demolitions can accomplish, which takes days, if not weeks, to prepare. The 9-11 Commission didn't even mention it, and FEMA actually stated they didn't know why it collapsed and left it at that. Brothers, I know what implications, I know that the above implications are hard, almost unthinkable, but the official explanation is utter nonsense, and 343 of our murdered brothers are crying out for justice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, All right. Well, welcome back. Uh, I guess we have a caller waiting. We'll go ahead and take that call. Hello. Hello, caller. Is this Bill? Yes. Hey, um, I like that uh, that new footage you're showing with um, with the close-ups of the exploding pieces. Oh yeah, and, and the, the cut just before that that I didn't show showed a piece, you know, blasting off into space like this. In fact, on this, it's right up here on this one right here, and that piece some. goes shooting straight down after it goes out. You know, it changes direction in midair. The only way you can do that is with an explosive impulse. Well, yeah, and. and it, it, you see that right in front of your eyes. You know, there's the explosion. You don't have to take anybody's word for it. I know, and, and I've, um, you know, whenever I see the footage or I hear mention of 9-11, it makes me insane because, because I can, it's like, why can't people see what's right in front of their faces? Well, they keep hitting us with these new current events so fast and so hard that, you know, you can't, just about the time you get up to speed on something in the past, boom, you're, you know, covered up with something new and it distracts you. Well, I'm going to tell you some uh, just a, a little bit of success, you know, kind of a crack. A, a crack Go for the, it. I'd like to hear it. <laughs> a, a crack in the door I've had with my family. Okay. Especially my um, uh, my parents and, and my uncle. You know, they they uh, you know they pretty much accepted. You know, they accepted the government um, the government line and and the you know the alternative, which is which is 
like most likely the truth is so overwhelming that they can't even yeah, uh, conceive of it. And then and then I get on you know I get suddenly get on that train and try to distill the entire nine eleven truth <laughs> um, message and you know into into some sort of digestible sound bites, communicate that to them. And right. the, what I've been able to at least it work has worked for me in, in talking to them and some other people is um, getting away from the who and the how like who did it Just, and how it was done, to what. What's yeah, like fr- the architects and engineers are doing. Yeah, what's in front of your eyes? What, you know, what is incontrovertible? You know, what right. doesn't make sense to your reason? Well, that clip that I just showed, I mean, you know, you can't explain it by, by saying, oh, a sudden wind current, you know, or something, because it doesn't make the flash, <laughs> right. you know, on and on. So, well, that's what I wanted to say. Um, I enjoy your show, and thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you. We're going to have the next new, I got the next quarter already approved. It's the same schedule. It will be the first and third Saturdays, so it'll be January 7th will be the next live show. This is the end of the fourth year. We're starting the fifth year. Well, we have another caller. No no a new caller? No problem. Um well, as you see, the number is 503-288-4442 and 288-4448. Um, yesterday I was doing a show for uh, Jim Lockhart. We were doing a growing concern, and people started calling in, and uh, one guy called up and wanted to talk about some 9-11 stuff, and I told him, hey, call back on this show. So go ahead and call back on this show. In the meantime, um, we still have a few things that are you know, kind of pending. We have uh, Senator Mike Gravel's kind of ramrodding the push to get an initiative petition in, what, four or five states, Oregon being one of them, to open a new investigation. Each state can open its own investigation. I mean, we've all, every state had people die at 9-11, so they all have some sort of jurisdiction, I guess is the way that works. But uh, the main thing is to you know, we, we probably won't get a new investigation just by this initiative petition, but what it will do is open a dialogue for the 2012 elections. And that brings up another thing. The Ron Paul deal that we were talking about just before the uh, uh, David Chandler clip and at the last of the Alex Jones clip, uh, I've been a Democrat all my life, a registered Democrat, a card-carrying Democrat, but lately that hasn't meant very much to me. Looking at the Democrats, they used to stand up for the labor, you know, laborers, the workers. They don't seem to be doing that at all anymore. The Democrats and Republicans are working lockstep to systematically strip us of wealth and rights. So, you know, the only bright star on the horizon was Ron Paul. And, you know, we even if we put all our eggs into that basket, we shouldn't hold out too much hope because, you know, he's still got the rest of the establishment to buck. But I went ahead and got online. It's so easy to do. I re- recommend everybody do it. If anybody's in Iowa watching this show on YouTube or wherever else, uh, it, it's probably more important that you do it. But change your registration from whatever you are to Republican. I just did that. I'm now a Republican. <laughs> okay, I'm a Republican. But the whole point is now I can vote in the primary for Ron Paul. Ron Paul needs that primary support really badly. And I'm not a political person, but Ron Paul's the only one advocating an end to this treachery. He's the only one advocating an end to our empire. He's the only one advocating recalling our troops from the 600 or so bases we have all over. I don't know. The number, every time you hear somebody tell, it's in the hundreds, though depending on where you draw the line about what is the base and what isn't. But, you know, the idea that we still need troops in Japan or Korea or anywhere, what's what's that all about? I mean, well, we know what it's about. It's about empire, and it's about controlling natural, natural resources. It's about controlling who has the power in the world. And yet, that's totally different from the story they tell us when they're ta- when they're justifying things. We're doing, we're fighting for their freedom. We're installing democracy. You know, they finally had to admit about regime change, but they managed to push that through as if that was a legitimate reason to go attack some other country. You know, cold off the shelf, one that hasn't ever done anything to us. Uh, and we had, you know, the American public, as 
weak minded as they are, you know, you have to go through something to lead them the way you want to go. And if you're going to do something that's totally